AMI. And the head of the U.S. Conference of Mayors, Latoya Cantrell, is the mayor of New Orleans. Plus, we have Atlanta Mayor Andre Dickens with us, along with John Giles, the mayor of Mesa, Arizona. Good morning to all of you, and thank you so much for being here morning. in person. Um, I, I want to talk about just what is developing um, in terms of the shooting in California. Nationwide, we are seeing this spike in violent crime. We're seeing reports of an uptick in anti-Semitism and hate crimes. All of you are from states where there are fairly permissive gun laws. And I wonder, uh, Mayor Suarez, how you put those pieces together. What is driving this? Yeah, it's it's uh, so many different uh, factors that are driving this. But, you know, one of the things that we focused a lot on in this uh, mayoral conference that we just ended was mental health. Uh, mental health is a huge component of what's driving a lot of these. Uh, when you look at the root cause and you go back and you uh, sort of peel back the layers of the onion, uh, mayors are very concerned about it. Um, we obviously had a panel, obviously, on, uh, on, on urban crime. Mm -hmm. um, and certainly a lot of these mayors uh, have talked about, uh, you know, gun control in their cities. Um, in our city, you know, we, we have, we were very blessed. We had a great year. Uh, our homicide level went down. We've been able, and, and I knock on proverbial wood, that we haven't had any of these mass shootings that we've seen across the country, which seem to be, uh, you know, es escalating in terms of frequency and in terms of, um, uh, you know, the amount of times that we're seeing them. It's almost every day, it seems like we're having one. Um, so uh, it, it's been it's been tough. It's something that mayors are grappling with across the country, and we're focusing it on in a very comprehensive way. You specifically this week told your fellow mayors that uh, some of this is driven by no cash bail policies. Why do you say that? Are repeat offenders a problem? Yeah, well, what, what I'm focusing on is the no cash bail uh, is creating lawlessness in a lot of our cities. What's happening is, for example, people get out uh, right away. They're not even, uh, uh, you know, they don't even have to post bail, uh, so they're able to get out uh, right away. And so we're seeing someone go into, like, a CVS, for example, um, and, and take thousands of dollars worth of merchandise, which is causing uh, CVSs to close, which hurts, uh, the, you know, the rest of the city. But that, that's not particularly related to, to the gun violence issue. It's related more to petty crime, uh, which is creating lawlessness in some of our cities. But what we're do we are seeing uh, in the city of Miami is, you know, we are upfunding our police. You know, a lot of cities yeah. got into the defunding police movement, and we're seeing that as a bipartisan issue. Mm -hmm. I said it at the White House, uh, you know, just uh, a couple days ago, and the president echoed what I said about upfunding police and not defunding police. So I think that yeah. is a bigger issue as we uh, struggle with how we solve these issues in uh, on our cities. And, and President Biden put in, what, $4 billion in grants that's available for local law enforcement use in cities around the country. Yeah, you know, as you talked about this issue that's happening right now in California, yet another mass shooting in our country. It continues to happen uh, too frequently. And so uh, it's just too many guns in America. It's too many guns in the hands on our streets. And guns plus anger equals bad outcomes, equals violence. And so we have to bring back uh, laws that are sensible, uh, common sense gun laws to be able to reduce the amount of access that people have to guns. And so you see another mass shooting and uh, lives are lost, and my heart goes out to the people of California experiencing that. And so, as Mayor Suarez mentioned, we're talking mm -hmm. about mental health and how to make sure that we have uh, anti-violence in our communities. We're utilizing a cure violence, uh, you know, to bring down the retaliation and make sure we have uh, healing in our communities to try to use policing and non-policing tactics to bring down violence. Midnight basketball, uh, things that are, you know, summer youth employment program to help, help our youth, but mental health and just getting people uh, the quality care that they need so they make wise decisions because mm -hmm. most of the violence that we're seeing in our communities is escalating disputes. People that are unable to resolve a conflict that's just escalated too much and people aren't fighting or arguing anymore. They're taking their uh, hands to their pockets and pulling out a gun and it gets too intense and someone kills someone and that's the violence we're seeing in America. So we have to take a whole of government approach to be able to bring down this violence. Things that we can do uh, to help our youth, to help our communities. Yeah. Uh, and and that's some of the stuff that we're doing in Atlanta. Mayor Jones, you actually, I was surprised when I saw that Mesa has such a big population. I think you've, you've, you're the biggest city at the table. Yeah. Um, and it looked at, I looked at your police site, it says that you are one of America's safest large cities. Right. How do you qualify that and, and how are you doing that if that is a, is a fact? Well, if a lot of the things that, that these fellows had just mentioned, we are, are doubling down on our investment in our police department and we are shifting the paradigm. A few years ago, we changed the name of our fire department. It's no longer the Mesa Fire Department, it's now Mesa Fire and Medical to better reflect what we do. We need to do the same when it comes to policing. It needs to be the police and mental health department. 
Last year, we, we uh, diverted over 3,000 911 calls away from a police response to a mental health response. So again, it, the, the, the importance of mental health is, is ubiquitous in all that we do, and it was discussed at the, uh, at the conference. It's, it has everything to do with, with how we address homelessness. It has everything with how we do how we address uh, policing in our community. Mayor Cantrell, I, I want to get you on that, too, because uh, President Biden said it's not about defunding the police. It's about restraining the police. I wonder if you agree with that. I know you have had a problem in New Orleans with not having enough police officers, less sure. than 1,000 for 300,000 people. Sure. And the thing is, is that um, it's about retention, and it is also about recruitment. Uh, because of this second tranche of the American Rescue Plan dollars coming our way with direct allocation, oh, it has really been a lifeline uh, where we're putting $80 million in public safety across the board. One of the biggest in terms of a retention and incentive package to retain. Uh, we see it slowing down, meaning attrition is declining. Our officers are staying. And so we just have to continue to give the tools and resources that our officers need to respond. Also, in terms of the capacity issue you mentioned, you know, I've had to put um, all commissioned officers that were in special ops, over 75, back on the street because my officers were saying, hey, we need help out here. So I have to protect my officers so they can protect my city. And so we're seeing a real results in regards to our, our redeployment strategy on the ground. So it, you, New Orleans has the highest per capita murder rate of any major city. Why? Why is because, one, Dealing with COVID-19, violence, everyone has guns. Uh, the ability or the lack of the ability to resolve a conflict uh, without reaching and pulling a gun. Also, as it relates to accountability, you know, um, low-lining offenses, you know, when they don't get bail or they're not um, restrained, then we're just seeing how these crimes escalate. Mm -hmm. People need to be held accountable across the board. And we're seeing uh, uh, results, I would say. We're moving in the right direction. But I tell you, we definitely need to hold people accountable. Um, you can't fight crime just focusing on police. Mm -hmm. It's about a system, a criminal justice system. It's about the DA, uh, your judges. And it's about building in accountability. Everyone needs to be held accountable. And that's how we're focusing on it. Holistic approach in the city of New Orleans. Definitely uh, seeing a decline, moving in the right direction. This issue of crime in your city is causing a lot of political problems. And you are the target of a recall drive that's underway uh, right now. Mm -hmm. uh, a number of allegations against you as well mm -hmm. uh, in, in regard to financial improprieties. How much of the responsibility with the crime issue do, do you personally take? Well, first of all, it is the New Orleans Police Department that is absolutely under my authority. And with that, making sure that not only I'm listening to my officers, but getting them the resources that they need to fight crime. And that is exactly what we're seeing on the ground, the incentive packages, retaining officers, as well as recruitment. Mm -hmm. And that's the focus. And you believe you'll survive this recall effort? Well, based on what I see mm -hmm. is that the residents of my city uh, definitely appreciate continuity in leadership. And so with that, uh, that speaks to keeping progress moving and alive under my leadership. Second elected twice in the city, 61 percent the first time, 65 percent the mm -hmm. second time. Continuity and leadership is what I'm seeing by my people. I, I want to get to all of you on a number of issues, but I, I know something very uh, intense has just happened in Atlanta. Mayor Dickens, I watched a press conference you held last night following the death of a Georgia-based activist. It turned into a riot. This stems, as I understand it, from the shooting death of an activist. Um, and the body camera from the policeman who's believed to shoot this uh, individual doesn't exist. Um, what can you tell us in terms of who is behind the violence that happened yesterday? Yeah, uh, earlier this week, an individual that was protesting in the woods, uh, a number of folks are in the woods trying to protest against the development of a public safety training center, which is for police and firefighters, a new state-of-the-art training center that's going to allow us to do 21st century policing, allow us to have an emergency vehicle obstacle course, and these things that police and fire will be able to work together to be able to uh, bring about, you know, safety in our community. And so we're building it, but some folks don't want to see anything built that's 
supports police, so mm -hmm. they call it Cop City. And these individuals are in the woods protesting it, and unfortunately, they uh, were engaged by uh, Georgia State Patrol, asked them to be able to move out of the, the woods. An individual shot at the Georgia State Patrol, and the Georgia State Patrol officer shot back, and unfortunately, uh, that individual was killed, and the, and the patrol officer, the state patrol officer, was shot in the abdomen, and so now uh, they had a, a, a protest last night, uh, and it was peaceful. But there were some individuals within that crowd that meant violence. They had explosives. They burned down a police car. They broke windows at businesses. And so our police department, along with our state and federal partners, took swift action within two blocks and brought that situation under control. And the violence stopped. And those six individuals were arrested. And it should be noted that mm -hmm. these individuals were not Atlanta or Georgia residents. Most of them traveled into our city to wreak havoc. And so we love. Uh, to support people when they're doing right. Peaceful protest is a part of the American, uh, our freedoms. But mm -hmm. when you are violent, we will make sure that you get uh, held I want, accountable. I want to pick you up on, on that point. When you say people from out of town, they're carrying explosives. Um, is this an organized uh, movement here? Your local paper says this is having national reach with reaction from groups ranging from, quote, environmental activists, radical anarchists, and black revolutionaries. Marjorie Taylor Greene, Georgia Congresswoman, and I'm sure you know her, blamed Black Lives Matter and Antifa, and that she blamed Democrats. On the facts, yeah. seven to 13 people have been charged with domestic terrorism. Mm -hmm. Is this terrorism? Is this crime? What is this? Who's behind it? Yeah, I, 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 I won't go as far as whatever uh, that representative said, but what I will say is that it is a crime. Uh, and that's why they've been charged with the crime. And these crimes... Domestic terrorism. And the, and the crimes range from violence to domestic terrorism to assault and battery and some other things. Um, but yes, it is violent when someone turns to burn down a police car or break out windows or have explosives on them. I don't get into the names. I don't know all the organizations. I'll let y'all decide who did it. I just know they're arrested. And if they come into Atlanta again to wreak havoc, they will be arrested again. But do you believe your city is being targeted by organized groups? In that regard, yes. Um, those individuals that are uh, protesting against Cop City, as they mm -hmm. call it, it's really a public safety training center. Uh, they don't want to see uh, the very things that they ask for, more police training. We can't train uh, imaginary. We have to do it in a facility that allows for police, firefighters, and the community to train together. And so this is bringing about the change that we wanted to see in 2020. And now while we're doing it, these individuals don't want to see any resources go towards that uh, training. And so we're going to develop this training center and those individuals will have to come to a halt. Uh, Mayor Giles, um, you are on the front line of the migration surge. And I think it's so interesting that you're characterizing your city as very safe. Mm -hmm. You know, these issues of migration surges being uncontrolled and crime are often conflated. Mm -hmm. How are you doing that um, in terms of uh, not having this overwhelm your local officials and law enforcement? Well, I wish I could say it's not overwhelming us. Uh, it, it is, and it has been for decades. And uh, one of the uh, things I've enjoyed about this conference over the last few days is we, you're starting to see more bipartisan. Bipartis